Okay, so I am Eleanor Nostrowski and I'm with the Bertel Mini Otis CDC and uh, today is Tuesday, February the 1st and I'm sitting here with Scott Brooker, uh, Brooker Technologies and um, so we've been hearing a lot about Bitcoin crypto mining in Prairie View Municipality. It's been quite the hot topic lately and um, we're really fortunate because we have a bit of a expert um, in the field that lives in the municipality and has been very open about um, talking to him and getting some answers to questions. So we just thought we would sit down with him today and um, Scott, if you could tell us a little bit about what crypto mining is so that somebody who doesn't understand what it is can... Okay. Basically, you're just running a computer similar to the one that's in your home, probably under your desk. Um, that's the simplest way to describe it. You've got a computer, uh, it's using electricity, they all have a fan usually, they make a little bit of noise uh, and produce some heat. Okay. Um, and then when you scale up from beyond, say, a single computer, which a lot of people mine crypto just with their home PC, then people will expand the you know, now maybe they're using their mom's computer and their sister's computer, whatever, then they'll usually expand maybe a little further. Now they have, say, I don't know, 10 computers in the garage running, and then they make the leap to uh, machines uh, like we have here that are specifically designed and super efficient to do the work for the crypto mining. Okay, and they're called miners. And they're they're called miners, yeah. Okay. So, can you tell us a little bit about like what your history is in in the industry? Uh, you have said you've been in it for about ten years. So, what have what is it that you have been doing? Well, I kind of followed those steps that I just laid out. Um, Two thousand and eleven. I can't remember what month I started, but in two thousand eleven, I set up. Or actually, sorry, no. I think around 2007, I started building silly computers to just have a lot of compute power. I used those computers on some projects uh, like SETI at home, looking at the radio signals for whatever, aliens, whatever, <laughs> or um, protein folding, where it was looking for cures for weird diseases and, and things like that. Mostly I was doing that because I didn't really have anything uh, to utilize the strength of the computers that I was building, so it was a hobby to build sort of a supercomputer, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have an application for it. So uh, sometime in 2011, one of my friends from Silicon Valley had called me and he said, hey, you should check out this thing called Bitcoin. You could use those silly computers that you've built to actually make some money. <laughs> And I was like, really? That, that, that sounds too good to be true. So um, I looked into it. And at first I couldn't believe it because it was like, no, this, it looked too good to be true. So I thought, okay, too good to be true probably it is. But it worked out. Um, and then from there I built, I think, 10 PCs, personal computers. Um, it was in the middle of winter, so it was great. It was heating the house. I didn't have to run the furnace. Uh, it didn't cost me anything to heat the home, uh, which was a plan of mine from way back was to use a computer farm, which I assumed would be rendering uh, like Pixar movies or something like that, um, and then uh, use the excess heat to pump into uh, a water table to breed fish, and then also, so I'd be the second application of the energy and then run a greenhouse. Uh, with the remain with the with the water with the nitrates and everything in it from the fish and 
the extra heat. So, so that's where I was going originally, because mm -hmm. that was my big plan from like, I don't know, a couple of decades ago was to build something like that. So this looked great. So, um, so I expanded and expanded and expanded. Um, I, I had a building at, on my farm site, which I had built specifically to breed tropical fish in. It's a two-story building, but the main floor was just going to be for aquatics. Mm -hmm. But uh, I ended up converting that into what is now a Bitcoin mine. Um, originally, I had told Hydro I need more power. They didn't believe me. Um, then they kind of said, look, as soon as you blow up the power supply to your farm, we'll come out and swap it with something bigger. That's because they didn't believe me. Uh, and then when I put in a request to put in even more power, like half a megawatt, again, they didn't believe me. They sent out a whole bunch of engineers. I had like a sample set up to show them how much power it was using, whatever, and they still kind of didn't believe me and they thought I was nuts. But they, they put the power in <laughs> anyway. So, uh, so then I expanded that and then, um, yeah, and I was also running it in the house in Beulah for like since day one, that's where it all started, right? So, uh, and then eventually I acquired the, the old post office sort of shop building thing at the corner and uh, expanded that to a megawatt. That took three years. So you had Hydro come in and upgrade infrastructure right. to that site. Right, which wasn't that big of a deal because it was right across the street from the substation, mm -hmm. kind of like here. But the farm was a bigger deal because it was two miles or whatever from the substation. Right. So it was, both times it was a considerable amount of money to upgrade like just to get hydro to upgrade that was I think fifty five and seventy five thousand dollars so two different ones mm -hmm. so it was significant um, and then uh, and then yeah and then it's just maintaining the computers that's that's what okay. happens after that so yeah. so that has gotten us to the point where today we're sitting in what was formerly the Manitoba Hydro building in Burgle. Right. So you've recently um, purchased it, and can you tell us what you are, what your plans were to to do out of this building? So my plan for this building was to build a repair center because my other sites are uh, well. There's no water at one of them, and the other one's a farm site. So. Uh, I need to hire people. I can't continue doing this all by myself. It's way too much work. So uh, I kind of needed a place that was friendly for, for employees. So I thought this building would be perfect. I had looked at it three years ago and I was thinking of buying it then and it didn't really work out. And then when I found out uh, Mining Sky or whatever was going to go in next door, I thought, well, okay, now maybe it makes a little more sense because they could be a potential client and um, whatever, you know, we could double up on some stuff, possibly. So so that's what I acquired this. So uh, this was going to be repair, a repair facility, um, and hopefully that's what it will be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so on, on just spitting off of that, just to make clear to anybody who's watching, we are, you are not affiliated whatsoever other than you had potential neighbors moving in next door to you. Yeah, I'm not affiliated um, to my East guy right, at all. Right, right. You're with Brooker Technologies. You've been doing your own thing for 10 plus years. Right. Um, and so based on that, you have pretty good understanding of, of what it is. You've obviously, There's have you ever been to any major facilities that do Bitcoin mining or more the lower scale ones. Uh, yeah, no, I've been to pretty much most of the large scale ones and I'm under an NDA on most of them. So, um, Purchasing this facility, which was probably three to six months ago, three months ago-ish. Well, um, I don't know, I can't remember. So are you employing anybody at this point? Yep. I uh, probably shouldn't mention names. No, but like, how many employees do you have? There's two. Okay. High school. Uh, or just out of high school, or just coming out of high school right. students. So some there's some opportunity if you do grow and and expand. Right. So um, the biggest 
thing that we have heard um, that, I mean, everybody has the, the concern. So I think that we should probably address it and see if you have any insight into it, and it is noise. Um, nobody wants to be in a situation where they, um, they can't enjoy the outdoors and, you know, enjoy the lifestyle that we obviously we promote and we're used to and, right. um, and it's peaceful. So can you tell us what your experience is with what the noise levels are? So the miners themselves, the type or the brand or whatever, however you want to classify them, that I'm aware of that Mining Sky would be using are the same ones that I've been using. They make about 85 decibels at the miner. Uh, and then of course, doing math, you can calculate at what distance the sound drops off to the point where it's imperceivable or uh, where other things in the environment would be way louder, like say the wind or your neighbor's air conditioner, or your car idling in the driveway, your own forced air system in the house. Uh, so w originally I had done the math and did, you know, like a distance chart based on just open air, no buildings, no trees, just like if you were in a football field with no obstacles. Mm -hmm. I calculated that by the time you got to the edge of the highway on the other side of the road, you'd be at about 35 decibels. So that would mean nobody, unless maybe if you got lucky, like say there was no wind, humidity was down, it's really cold out, <laughs> hey. and you put your hands behind your ears <laughs> and aimed your head just right, you might be able to hear the noise. But what case, so when you were doing your calculations, how many miners was that running? Because I guess that's, that has been the concern, you know, it's, it just, you basically have to do the calculation from the closest set of miners to, say, the person that's listening. Right. Right. So, because if you have, you know, a thousand miners, you're not going to hear the ones that are behind the ones that are closest to you. So, if I have 10 lawnmowers running on my front lawn, and yeah. then I start up another 50 behind, the sound isn't going to amplify by that much. Well, you're only going to hear the lawnmower you're probably facing because your ears that's, are somewhat directional. Okay, right? that's so, how hearing kind of works. Yeah, so, I mean, without getting too complicated here, I mean, whatever your face is pointed at is usually what you're hearing the best because both ears are acquiring mm -hmm. the sound, assuming that your ears are both 100%. Um, and then distance is what will make, well, and obstacles, obviously, but like just to keep it simple, assuming it's just a wide open space, you can calculate what the sound level will be at certain distances. And then if you take a sample of the sound level, say in somebody's yard or whatever across the highway, you'd know right away whether they'll even be able to hear it because just the ambient sound is going to be a certain level, like with the wind or the leaves rustling or whatever. So, so knowing what you know about what um, other other companies possibly may be planning to do in in the future, you yourself actually have approximately two hundred and fifty miners in one C can right. in the Beulah area. Right, and. So if you're standing right beside it, it's fairly loud. We would be talking about 10 decibels louder than we are right now, which would sound like me shouting at you if I raise my voice to that level. But not, not super loud, but you know, you could talk at that level. Um, if we were trying to make the sound of 35 decibels, it would probably be about as loud as you rubbing your skin with your finger. Maybe a little louder, but it would, or maybe, I don't know. Right. It's not very loud. But okay, maybe your, um, your synthetic glove. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's probably louder. Actually, we should bring that meter in here and try, but 
uh, yeah, it would be quite quiet. So if you were outside and there was wind or anything going on, birds chirping, it would be like way louder than, than that. So my, my interpretation of the numbers that I calculated was uh, nobody could hear it on the other side of the highway, but um, if somebody was across the street here, um, right, the house here, the one home that's literally got almost nothing between the miners and, and the corner of their house. If you were standing at the corner of their house, um, I can't remember what the decibel number was, but they definitely would be able to hear it. <laughs> so I, I, absolutely guilty of of YouTubing the heck out of right. Okay, a so, lot of stuff. So a lot of people in the beginning said to me like. I, watched a YouTube video and I can't believe how loud this is. Right. But what they were looking at, and I knew right away what they were looking at. There's a thing where uh, Bitcoin miners take these sea containers and they go to um, like an oil well where there's flare gas. So, you know when you're driving down the highway and you see the oil tanks and there's usually a big pole in the air and a flame shooting out mm -hmm. the top? That's the flare gas, right? So what they're doing is, instead of just burning it off, they're hooking it a gas turbine to it which is a jet engine and they're burning that gas to make electricity for the Bitcoin miners so that is like 150 160 okay. decibels so that is loud it's literally a jet taking off and that's what people were looking at mm -hmm. and they thought that's what the yes. computer was or what the operation was or whatever and so in everyone's defense I who have watched those videos I wouldn't know that because they certainly didn't Say what that was. The other thing that I have watched was um, mining that was taking place in buildings. So the heat that those miners were generating had to be removed by fans. Yeah, so some of those setups too, people have gone into like an existing structure. They've loaded it up with miners. Yes. Um, so they've got like racks and floor to ceiling, the computers just stacked like books on a shelf sucking cold air in one side, blowing heat out the other, and then they got to get all that heat out of the building. And you, it's hard to describe the amount of heat, but it's like a pizza oven. So the, the exhaust wall of those miners would cook you, probably, if you stood there long enough. So they got to they got to move a lot of air. So what they end up doing, usually, is they start cutting holes in either the roof or the walls, or they, or they might even knock the walls completely out of the building uh, and just put filters up uh, so to keep out bugs and dust and stuff like that. But a lot of times is they're just cramming smaller fans into to little holes and then they're trying to blow the hot air out and then you run into problems kind of like cavitation on a propeller in the water where it's spinning and it's, uh, it's not, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, fan surge I think is what the technical term is but so if you're blowing air kind of like a propeller in water and then all of a sudden uh, there's nothing to push and then you kind of get this weird like warbling or buffeting noise I don't know okay. how, how so, to describe these sounds but and then that becomes very annoying because now you might have uh, like a change in pitch or lower frequency noise or whatever and yeah so would you say it's factual that if you had run ran this amount of miners say 3500 in a building versus at sea camps it could possibly be louder being in a building because of if you put it needing in, to remove the the heat if you put it in a building that was designed specifically for the bitcoin miners it should be possibly quieter if you put, if you try to cram it into a building that just used to be something else, right? And like if you put them all in this hydro building, yeah. Like if and you have to remove that heat, yeah. So if I if I had this whole place full of those miners, I mean I'd have to have huge holes in the wall uh, and giant like hog barn fans, basically. But a lot of retrofitted buildings, what they take is hog barn fans and push air in one side, blow it through the computers and then have them pulling it out so they have like a push-pull setup. And I don't know what the decibel level is of those things, but they're, they're fairly loud. 
they probably be similar to the grain dryer okay. next door. Well, I'm hoping that I mean they can. that that has kind of addressed the noise issue a little bit. Um, you know, of course, nobody is going to know until something is up and running. But um, I think that answered some questions. It kind of led me into just a few more that I wanted to ask. Well, here's here's the easiest way to prove the concept is we just rack up a whole bunch on those shelves, push them out into the parking lot, and run them outside for four hours, and just say, look, today's going to be noise experiment day. Go stand in your backyard and see if you can hear it. Right, and understanding that a <laughs> hundred versus a thousand isn't going to amplify it by a thousand times, because I think that is generally what I thought, even. You know, if you have two things running, it's going to be double as loud. Three things, triple. Yeah, the only difference, I think, with the number of them is if, say you have a wall of them that starts at the road here and goes all the way to the back of that lot. So, if you're standing directly in front of it, it's going to be loud, and it's going to be loud as you turn your head, say, 45 degrees this way and 45 degrees that way. I'm just making up this right. degrees, but... You know, so it's going to be louder than if you just had, say, a hundred right in the center. Then you'd probably only have to tip your head about five degrees, and you wouldn't hear it at all. Like assuming you're close enough to hear it, right? right? That, I think that would be the only difference. So the the sound volume is not going to get any higher, but the amount of like pivoting of your head where you might be able to perceive it could be greater. So. Other than the noise, do you have any um, idea if there are any like, emissions or any... Um, the only thing that comes out of them is heat. I mean, it's heat. literally the same thing as what's under your desk at home. So Right, so, so the fan, fan is blowing so, air. Yes, yeah, so you got heated air. Heated air. Yes, yeah, so you got heated air coming out. You, you, you should be able to hear the fan if you're listening carefully and your house isn't too loud. And you don't have like a really loud forest air furnace or something mm -hmm. like that. So, um, the one miner is going to be a lot, um, a, a hundred times louder than what's in my office, right? The fan in a computer in your office should be 25, probably 35, maybe 45 decibels if you've got like a performance computer. Okay. I think. I, I don't think they, the fans go much louder than that because. You're literally sitting right beside right. it, so you don't want something super annoying. Right. Right? I can't so. say I've ever noticed it, even hearing it. Usually yeah. your fans, like if you go to buy a replacement fan for your computer, they'll have a decibel rating. Mm -hmm. Like it'll show how much air it can move and then also how loud it is. So you can kind of pick between how much do I need to cool this thing off and how loud do I want it to be. So if you were doing like say we had a computer under the desk here and we were doing interviews all the time and you would want to put the quietest fan in that computer so it's not getting picked up by your microphones. Right. But if you were doing something high end, like you were doing something that was doing a lot of calculations like AutoCAD or you were gaming or something like that, you're probably going to want to have a louder fan because you're, you're going to want to get that heat out so the computer right. doesn't overheat. So as far as emissions, um, what about, because things break. Right? So you have a building with 3,800 computers in it. And obviously some of them are going to need repair. Right. Um, what about the ones that need to be thrown away? Because, or, or I guess they're new enough that hopefully they'll last for a little while. But at some point, you know, I know that there, that was one of the questions. Yeah. Is like, what happens to those things? I mean, I've never had one yet that went to the garbage. Somebody's always bought them, so. Right. And just to note that that <laughs> is your long-term goals for your business is to be the repair. Right, to repair them. I mean, at some point right. they become obsolete and then. Like all computers, yeah, right? And then I like would all TVs. Yeah, and then I would assume somebody would re. Recycle. Well, or grind them up, get yeah, recycle them, whatever, uh, to get the you know, precious metals out, whatever there might be there, so. Okay. So there's going to be tin, lead, gold, probably, I don't know, whatever else is in those. Mm -hmm. And just for one of the final things, you're, because you're obviously invested in this industry, um, there is some growth potential, there is, um, 
infrastructure that you've invested in, and obviously uh, the company that has um, worked on the site location of where they are hoping to go, right. um, they've invested with Manitoba Hydro a lot of dollars in infrastructure. Um, what is your thought on the economic benefit to a rural community to have um, people investing? Is it is well, it pretty much zero because geez, maybe it'll start one job and somebody else will get the, the profits? Um, like, how would you explain that this would be of any benefit to our area? Well, the infrastructure upgrade is huge because whoever is doing the mining or running these computers, basically it's a data center, right? They're building. Uh, it's just focused on cryptocurrency, so they call it mining. Um, but the infrastructure upgrade to the town, as far as the electrical service goes, is huge. Right, the I'm pretty sure next door spent uh, one and a half million dollars, roughly, to upgrade the infrastructure. So normally that would be a good thing because that means other industry now can just tap off of those upgraded lines and start something new. But in this case, for Bertel, they don't want computers going over next door. They're certainly not going to want a paper mill or a aluminum smelter or, uh, I don't know, a chemical factory like that one down the highway. Like all of those things are things that would use a ton of power. Right. So, so what do you say to those who would be, would suggest that, you know, we do, everybody wants to reduce their carbon footprint. So, um, the thought is maybe using hydro, that amount of hydro, that could power 10,000 homes is wasting it. Yeah, the thing is they're not thinking about how much power it costs to do all the other things that they're taking for granted. The Bitcoin thing uses a lot of power, but so does the banking system. You think of all the lights, all the computers, all the ATM machines, you added those all up, it comes up to a tremendous amount of electricity. And then, you know, there's been examples of Christmas lights. You take all the Christmas lights that are turned on, you use way more electricity than the Bitcoin stuff. And the Bitcoin stuff actually has a use. Whereas the Christmas lights are just mm -hmm. cosmetic, right? And feel good things. So, uh, and then if you look at other industries too, you know, like the paper that made your book or the rims on your car or the network that runs your internet, your cellular network, all those things use a tremendous amount of electricity. So if anybody was really worried about that, they would turn off their cell phone, they would turn off their computer, and they'd never use the internet again and go back to writing letters. You know, that this is the future. It just hasn't caught up to a lot of people yet. Mm -hmm. And from talking to you, I know that you have um, reached out to um, to some people who have concerns. And is that, are, are you still open to that? If somebody yeah. watches this and they have some questions that we haven't asked or if they have possibly felt that we have um, Missed led the yeah. narrative to a certain uh, direction? I mean, I have a, a certain amount of bias, obviously, but I try to keep fairly even uh, to make decisions correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of my right. thing. So. Um, so Scott, uh, I need to but, ask you. But I do allow, if anybody wants to come and see, I've always said, come down, I'll show you what it is. You may not understand what it is, but I'll give you my honest opinion. I usually don't sugarcoat anything. So, uh, Okay, so yeah. if this was your neighbor starting it up right next door to you, how would you feel? If it was in somebody's garage right beside my house, I probably wouldn't be too thrilled if I was somebody that like to keep my windows open all the time but if it was something here the like I said the only there's only one house that I think may be able to hear it and that's I, I'm not even sure they'd be able to hear it inside the house they'd only be able to hear it in one corner of their yard and they also do things over there that are even louder than those things so I 
assume it wouldn't bother them. But uh, for me, like, like in this situation with this building, it wouldn't bother me because, first of all, it's a commercial zoned building. Mm -hmm. So it, what, I wasn't expecting it to be quiet. And also it's beside a major highway that has a pretty drastic incline, which means engine noise from the road is quite loud. Um, so, Do you think the engine my, noise my, from the road would be louder than... Oh, yeah. The engine yeah. noise from that is way louder. So, I mean, the bottom line with the whole issue is as long as the thing next door isn't breaking any bylaws as far as sound goes, and especially at night, right? Because you've got to make even less noise in the evening. Right. So, uh, if they're not making enough noise that, that it's even perceivable in the rest of the town, then I don't see how anybody could complain about it. And then if they did, then where do you stop? Because you've got people running central air conditioners or window air conditioners and stuff like that in the summer. So if you've got a guy that has a window air conditioner and your house is 20 feet away from his and you like to, you don't like air conditioning and you want to keep the windows open, now what are you going to do? You're going to say, okay, those, those air conditioners are too loud because they're way louder than what next door is going to be, right? So, I mean, if that is an issue, there's a whole ton of other things in the town that people are going to start saying, oh, well, you know, we want it quiet, so we're going to ban air conditioners. You know, the grocery store is going to have to move because they've got all those huge cooling units that, that are even louder, right, running there, and that's right in the town. I'm sure the pharmacy has a few of those. Um, then the hospital, any apartment building, if there's any, I don't even know, but like they would have, you know, condensed cooling cool. systems and right. stuff, right? So, yeah, so then where does it end, right? Okay, so um, we want to thank you all for your time. And if there are any questions that people have or if they want to reach out to you, I'm sure they can find you on. Yeah, they on can. Facebook, social media, you're here. I'm here most of all the time, yeah. as long as they just have to look outside, see if your Tesla's sitting out there. Well, it's usually parked inside. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm usually here. Uh, they can phone me, email me, social media, anything. And yeah, usually I'm available pretty quickly. So they can come down, take a listen, decide for themselves. Right. And again, we are very fortunate to have the opportunity, you know, within a very short driving distance to listen to these miners and to see exactly, um, you know, what it's going to sound like, what it's, you know, what it's going to be without being affiliated with, uh, with any right. other business. So, yeah, that was the other thing. So um, the other shipping container thing that I have at Beulah, which is right off the highway, two highways, I guess, there. Mm -hmm. Um, that box is set back in, uh, I believe it's 140 feet or something like that from the highway. And as far as I know, nobody has been able to park on the highway and hear it. So, that right, so if somebody just parked at the corner, rolled down their windows, you could get a pretty good of idea of why it If you could even hear it, right. yeah. So... That's right. We just want to make, ensure that nobody feels like they, no trespassing, okay, if that is on private property. Yeah, if somebody and, wants to go in and get close to it, yeah. I want to be there right. just in case somebody gets hurt or you exactly. know, whatever. I don't want people running around in there. Right. But they certainly have the opportunity to come and talk to you and... Um, also, if they do step foot in there, there's cameras everywhere and it yes. sets off alarms yes. and then I have to <laughs> respond to that too, so I don't... Yeah, for sure. Want to be you know, we want or... everybody to be respectful <laughs> yeah. and, you know, Scott is willing to talk to anybody, to um, answer any questions. If you want to phone him, you want to come out and, and see something, that would be great. So thank you, Scott, yeah. for meeting with us. And um, yeah, it was very nice chatting with you. All right, thank you.